if you are into red teaming and don't know or haven't used reverse SSH, you should immediately drop everything you're doing and check out this repository. Here's a quick overview of how it works. With the server binary, which you can compile on your own or download from the releases section, you can start the custom reverse SSH server. Other team members of yours can connect to the server via SSH and interact with fully functional encrypted SSH reverse cells you can establish by running the client binary on victim machines as we see here. It's worth to mention that in labs and red team engagements recently that I used reverse SSH, the binaries were not flagged as malicious even in environments with endpoint security, at least for the time being. Let's have an overview of how reverse SSH works. I'm not going to clone the repository, I'm going to use a pre-compiled executable from the releases and I see the latest one was released yesterday, let's go there. I have already done it actually, I have downloaded this server uh, binary. And we see the client binaries as well here pre-compiled. I guess this is for Unix and this is for Windows and these systems. I have it stored on my system in this directory. In order to start the server manually, we need to create an authorized keys file and store in there our public key. This will allow us to connect to this server and also the public key of anyone else we want to be able to connect, other team members. Uh, the server will look for this file when it's executed uh, in the current working directory. And of course we can use the client binary to make targets, victims, connect back to our server and control them from there. So let's begin. I'm going to generate a private and public key pair just for this example. So let's do SSH um, key gen type RSA. I'm going to name it uh, example RSA. Okay, let's give it a passphrase and repeat it. And here we go. We should have it. And now I'm just going to cut the example rsa public key value into authorized keys that we should have in this directory in order for this to work so it should be stored there and before we start the server uh, i want to also connect to a raspberry pi i have on this network just to have another team member to simulate uh, a cooperation here and i'm going to very quickly do the same here as i say it's key then that's the rsa i'm just going to keep the default directory and enter another passphrase here and here we go i want to, to read this value and store it in my authorized keys in the machine that we're going to start the server let's read it cut uh, it should be in my ssh folder id rsa dot public here it is just gonna grab this and also add it um, in authorized keys. Let me check if this actually worked as, pro as expected. Okay, they're both here and I think it's gonna work. We are now ready to start the server. We have everything we need. I'm going to start it and uh, have it listen on any interface port 1234 and I'm also going to use the insecure flag to let any client connect, connect back without any issues. And here we go, let's start the new tab and connect into this server now, with which we can list active sessions, uh, see who else is connected and everything. Let's see the, let's check the IP of this box. So let's connect uh, SSH, IP port is 1234. And remember we used, uh, we have added in the authorized keys, the public key of the certificate associated with one I just generated for this. And it is in opt, um, reverse SSH and it is the example RSA so let's do this uh, yes we want to connect and I just need to type the password I used to generate this and we're in and if we do a less now I don't have any clients but uh, uh, we can do a bunch of things here and we're in the server and let's connect back with also the Raspberry Pi let's do exactly the same P1234 uh, it's in my default directory the certificate of this uh, of this client so i don't need really to uh use das i like i did before and let's just connect again i'm using the passphrase i used to generate this certificate just before and we're both in and if i do who i think yes we can see that uh root from this uh, ip is connected and also telemachus which is this box right here so let's finally use the client and get a reversal, see how it looks like. And uh, here's the machine I'm going to poison. I'm using AnyDesk, it's in my network, just to connect uh, remotely. Uh, it's a fully patched Windows 11 machine. Here's the security intelligence update. And also uh, everything is on. 
real-time protection, cloud delivery protection, and there's no exclusions uh, set for this machine. No existing exclusions. I have downloaded the pre-compiled client executable from the releases here on my desktop. Let's switch to the server and uh, let's finally run this and see what happens. I'm gonna open a terminal here and we can run the client with dust D destination being the IP of my server. I think it's 71 and the port is 1234. Let's see if this is going to work. Yes, we got a session here and let's see now uh, if I do a less. Yes, we can see an active session and we can do now connect uh, and we just need to pass this session ID that we want and we have a fully functional uh, reverse cell. And of course I can connect with my other instance here because this was the Raspberry Pi on this tab and here is this very own uh, machine and we can do also connect. What was the session? Let's see. Let's connect seven. It has tab autocomplete of course. And here we go. You can see that the cell is a fully functional PDY, which is super awesome. And you can just go in and out of session uh, just like that. Super awesome project. Very useful for red team operations. You should definitely check it out. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. And I'll see you on the next one.